welcome to the Ruth Loves to Knit podcast. I'm Ruth and I love to knit. You're very, very welcome here this morning as always. Well, it's morning with me. It's just gone about uh, five to nine. Um, I'm coming to you as always from Devon in the southwest of England, where I live with my husband Nigel and our two children, Eva, who is 15 and Samuel, who is 13. And they've just gone off to school while well, they're away. They're away exactly an hour. Um, and um, I thought I would just pop on and do a wee podcast. Well, I say we. <laughs> um, I did put a poll out on Instagram and here on YouTube to see whether people prefer longer podcasts or shorter podcasts. And one of the options I put was um, the longer the better. And most people said the longer the better. So this could be the longer the better kind of podcast. <laughs> so grab your drink um grab your craft and settle in and watch it over a few days watch it over a few weeks whatever you want but i hope we'll have a really good time together um this morning um i as i say um i'm coming to you from devon where we have had a uh, very very hot weather for the past week um if you remember my last podcast i had a shawl on i took it off to show you and i put it straight back on again well last week <laughs> Autumn forgot it was meant to come and we had temperatures upwards of um, 87, 88 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, 31, 32 um, Celsius, which is too hot for us here and we weren't expecting it. And um, But that was the humidity that got me. It was like being back in Bangladesh. It was so hot and sweaty and I'm very, very thankful that it has cooled way down. But even with this wee light knit on, I'm still feeling quite warm, you can see. But I have been dashing around this morning. Um, it is a beautiful day here this morning. Um, I'll say this morning a few more times. Uh, so hopefully the lighting's a wee bit better today. But I can see there's some shadows here. But we'll, what can you do? We'll get on with it. So as I say, you're so, so welcome here um, this morning. I actually haven't been knitting very much, which is an absolute, I was gonna say miracle, that's not the right word, it, um, unheard of for me. Last week, I think it was the humidity, it was too sticky. Um, even though last summer we had a very hot summer and I knit all sorts of things, I hardly knit at all. I would knit a few rows, put it down, do something else, knit a few rows, put it down, do something else. So, um, but I did lots of, yarn related things does that count <laughs> and I wanted to share them with you here this morning so where can you find me all the usual places Instagram is uh, Ruth Loves to Knit podcast um, Ravelry is Ruth Loves to Knit and um, I have an email <laughs> getting that from the back of my brain I have an email which is Ruth Loves to Knit um, at gmail, gmail com. no m in the middle of that Ruth Loves to Knit at gmail.com Sorry about that, I was rudely interrupted. <laughs> anyway, I was letting you know where you could find me. So, you know we have been doing an ongoing hashtag on Instagram, which is hashtag you feel free in 23. And I have been randomly picking um, from that hashtag to give people um, a little gifty of a uh, pattern from time to time. It's probably time to do that again, but um, I'll leave that one till next time, I think. Um, and if you've been doing something that um, you just wanted to do, um, no rules, no uh, um, things, just <laughs> statements, um, pop it in there. And because my at the beginning of the year, I realized everybody was making these very strict, well, not everybody, loads of people were making these very strict rules for themselves and these spreadsheets and everything. And I just wanted to <laughs> enable you to feel free to knit on absolutely anything you want. And later on, you might see that I've taken that to the extremes. <laughs> But anyway, so it's hashtag you feel free in 23 and pop um, that on your under your picture on your um, Instagram page and that will come through to the hashtag on there. And then we're also doing a mail, which is just on Instagram as well. Well, ju just on Instagram, but you can send me an email as well. And it is hashtag dust them off mail. And um, the fo one is hashtag dust them off mal fo and i looked this morning and there's 51 finished objects in that um mal already and it's still going on to the end of the year so there's plenty of time to just get started plenty of time to join in plenty of time to take your pictures of your finished objects i will be picking from the chatty thread too um so there'll be prizes and i promise 
I will get them together and we'll show you. There's so many lovely goodies. It's well worth jump, jumping in. And um, I will uh, show you. I can keep saying next time, every time, but I will get them together. I want to collate them. I want to get them in nice little prize packs so that you can see what, what, what you could win. There was a quiz show, isn't it? What you could have won. What was the quiz show? All of you lovely UK viewers, what was this quiz show? And it was the, the um, thing they used to say was, and here's what you could have won. <laughs> anyway it was a bullseye oh I can't remember show my age now um but yes we're doing so we're doing that and that's been going on basically very easy rules any pattern that you've had since before the first of June this year whether it's in a book or on Ravelry or whatever um get it done pull it out get it dusted off and um, we've all got beautiful books that we just look at and never knit out of and you feel free to pop those in there and get things done and you can also send me there's a lot of people not obviously on instagram um and you can send me a finished object uh, photo attached to an email to ruthlovestoknit at gmail.com and i have probably got i'd say about 35 that way so i've collated all those two and you will be in in the running just as much as anybody who puts it on instagram so join in just a bit of fun um it's a much more laid back than maybe the shawl um cals have been in the in the past and uh yeah, I'm not getting very far with mine, to be honest, but um, hopefully now maybe the weather's cooled down a wee bit, we'll, we'll get going on those things too. Um, I've got notes down here. I usually have a wee table and my son has stolen it to put his Lego on. And I went to take the Lego off it this morning and I just thought, oh no, there's so much of it. I'm just leaving it. So my where I've got my notebook, my notes are, it's a wee bit lower down than it usually would be. So sorry if I'm constantly looking down, but uh need to follow my notes so what else have I put here um oh I put um there's been 51 um entries on the fo thread on instagram and there's 37 emails that I've got so we're really doing well at such an early stage in the proceedings um I just wanted to say thank you so much for the lovely comments on my little Ireland tour last week um, so many of you said your ancestors are from Ireland or you've been to Ireland or you'd love to go to Ireland. So um, I really do appreciate. But the funniest comments were that my I showed my two kids, Eva and Samuel, and one of the days we went to the beach, it looked like they were dressed the same. <laughs> and several people said, do you do, do you dress your children the same? Well, I have not dressed my children for many years. That's a start. I wouldn't begin to pick their clothes for them. Um, but what happened was Eva, you know, teenager, decided that she wouldn't bother taking any clothes that she could go into the water with, even though I told her to. And Samuel has these two red T-shirts. They're the quick drying material and he he loves them, but he got paint on one of them. So I bought him exactly the same T-shirt again to wear out, so to speak. And he wears the other one in bed. So Eva borrowed one of them to go into the water. So I do not... Um, I do not dress them the same. I have not dressed them in many, many years. <laughs> they would not wear what I would like them to wear. And um, so, yes, I'm sure people on the beach thought, oh, my goodness, what kind of weird mom dresses her teenage children in the same clothes? So that was but it did make me laugh. And it was only when I watched the video back, I thought, oh, my goodness, <laughs> they do look like they're wearing exactly the same clothes. <laughs> so thanks for the comments on that, too. You have to laugh, don't you? Anyway, back to the knitting. <laughs> Um, this, the, uh, what am I wearing? Okay, this is um, the Oh La La, <laughs> I have to say it that way, don't you? The Oh La La top from um, Isabel Kramer. I test knit this um, oh, quite a while ago now. It's been out for a long time. Um, you can see the nice um, lace. It's like a tunic. I get up, this could be dangerous. Goes the whole way down. I've got a black vest underneath, so... Um, I did this in whole super soft, um, which we all say is not super soft. I do not enjoy knitting with Holst. Um, I have to be honest. I have destashed quite a few of my cones from Holst, but um, it does bloom beautifully, as you can see. And it is, it's it. I can wear well. I can wear lopey next to skin. Um, but uh, I thought I'd pop it on today. But actually, I'm already getting a bit warm. Because you can't really wear it without a layer under it, you know, so have a vest top under it. But uh, yeah, so that's the Ooh La La. You could make it with long sleeves if you want. Um, and that's from Isabel Kramer. I'm looking down at myself and then not looking at the screen. So what else? Oh, yes. 
Um, so many of you said lovely comments about my Ballyclare shawls. You know I did too. If you haven't seen the Ballyclare shawl, go back and watch my last episode, my Ireland episode. And lovely Brenda has been in touch. This is one of them. I have a yellow one and then I have this beautiful, it's been folded up because I definitely haven't needed to wear it. This is lovely Regia Lace. Oh, I suppose I could have worn it with this, could I? Maybe not. Um, and, uh, oh, it's so soft. And Brenda has offered us three free patterns for my viewers. Three free patterns. Now, I know many of you bought this pattern because she um, put it on initially for half price. It was £2 something. I don't know what that is in the rest of the world money. Um, like Literally giving it away. And I know many of you bought it. I really, really appreciate it because it is. It's just a pleasure to knit. And several people have, meant, have messaged to say they're loving knitting it. Um, but she has offered us three free patterns and you know if you've already bought it you could get it for a friend you could pass it on you'd send, send us um, their details if you haven't got it yourself you might have a chance of winning so three chances and I want a wee question uh, it's a load of nonsense but I thought I would ask it anyway and it just says um, who would you love to sit and knit with Maybe you don't like to sit and knit with anybody. Maybe you that's your time, that's your solo time, that's your time alone. But who would you, um, living or dead, um, love to sit and knit with? And I would love to sit, and I've mentioned her many, many times, I'd love to sit and knit with my wee granny because I was talking to my dad when I was over in Ireland about my granny and I always just remember my granny just working really hard all the time. You know, she did, cooked everything from scratch. She, you know, uh, she always had loads of kids in the house. So I don't remember her sitting knitting and crocheting. But my dad has telling me when she went into a nursing home, um, she um, knit and crocheted and won prizes. So, I mean, that's fantastic. So I would love to pick her brains and sit with her and knit or crochet with my granny. So who would you like to knit with? It's fine to say that you that's a solo thing for you. Um, maybe you like to knit with your knit group. Maybe you like to sit with your husband of an evening and just knit while you're watching television. But um, that's my little prompt. Um, who who what say? Who would you love to sit and knit with? And if you don't want to, if you don't want the pattern, just um, and you still want to leave a comment, um, just say don't want, don't want the pattern or thanks, but no thanks, that's fine. But this is the pattern that you're that you could win, and um, it was a thoroughly enjoyable knit, um, and thank you so much, Brenda, for the the pattern. So that's next time I'll, um, so just put a comment down below, and next time I will read out the winners. So. That's that. So quite excited about that because I always remember Ballyclare is my hometown. So um, in Northern Ireland. So you'll be knitting a wee bit uh, of me. So that weird. <laughs> anyway, back to the notes. OK, yes, let's get into it now. I think that's all the ad minute. Nine minutes. This is going to be a long one. So I have plans for today, but um, I don't have to do everything. I am looking over at eight project bags with whips in them and I have two here and I haven't been knitting much but as I said at the start I did have a um, yarny do yarny related things and I met it with a lovely podcast viewer and we went on a wee adventure so I'm going to tell you a bit about that later on but let's say I have some FOs but two of them at least were literally nearly finished in the last podcast which was two weeks ago so um don't get too excited <laughs> so the first finished object is my oh they're blowing out okay and that's why even though it's my favorite color I don't wear yellow on the podcast um these are the last <laughs> socks I'm doing for the Marie Curie sock quest oh you can't see there's a wee bit of orange and it's just lovely I haven't blocked them I will I'll block all of them before I send them because it's nice when you get a present isn't it um and this was done in I did a bigger a much bigger foot because the last time I sort of just knit socks that would suit me you know I'm a size eight which is a big foot for a for a woman um an adult woman anyway but um I just thought I'm sure there's bigger bigger people around so I think this is a size 10 or 11 uh, UK obviously um and so they're a bit big for my sock blockers but we'll sort them out and this was done in um mandy's yarn 
Mandy from Mice's Makes and this is my switch yarn and it's year of the yarn um, and it was March and I bought this for my, myself for my birthday and it's 75 uh, 25 and it's just a wee bit left. You can see the wee orange flecks in it. So those are perfect, couldn't be better for um the Marie Curie socks. But I think I think by the time I think I said last time, by the time we send them off, I think we'll have about eight or nine pairs because some of the girls, maybe even more, maybe more, some of the girls in the um ladies in uh, my knit group have knit some as well. So and we're gonna get those all together and try and send them off by October time. Um so yes, I know a lot of you have been knitting them too. So hopefully we'll, there'll be enough for everybody in the hospice this year. Then <laughs> Um, because it was so hot and I just couldn't be bothered and which is unheard of for me I would knit like anywhere anytime um, I just cast on 140 stitches and knit round and round and round and actually it's still wet because I forgot that the weather good weather had gone because everything was drying in seconds and I forgot and of course if this isn't dry and all it is is it's, it's even too damp to put on my head over my head it smells of, of wet wool is this really technical really um it's a snood <laughs> i knit um along with i knit a wee snood earlier in the year with um the no frills knitting shop was doing it and it was a hundred stitch snood and um you literally just cast on a hundred stitches and go for it um but oh, the smell of smell of wool and um i uh but it was a wee bit neat for my um musclier neck so i put just thought oh I'll just do 140 and see where that takes me but isn't it it's going to be beautiful it's blown out there look at that isn't that gorgeous and of course when you have it on you know it'll all bundle up lovely like that and i would wear these a lot in the house so that's that's my plan sort of to have it it's still so wet sort of to have it all bunched up around my neck <laughs> like that and keep it's the back of my neck annoys me when it's um when it's cold and uh, it's so soft, it's lovely and nice and bright. So that was just kept me going really in the last couple of weeks. And the yarn I used for that is from Somerset Yarns and it's called Psychedelic Denim. She does, if you like bright yarns, Somerset Yarns is for you, it's so nice. And it's 80% superwash merino and 20% bamboo, 400 meters. And I just knit really till I got fed up knitting. That's what I've got left and I'll put that maybe in a um advent or something for somebody. It's gorgeous. Really lovely. And as I say, uh, she has some stunning if you like bright colours, she has some stunning yarns at the minute. She really does. She's on Etsy. Does it say that? Yeah, there's her Etsy. Her Etsy shop details there. You can pause your screen and have a wee look. <laughs> Um, and um, yes, I'd highly recommend. So that was lovely. Actually, bamboo was lovely to knit with in the heat. It didn't stick on my fingers and it was really, really good. So something so simple, but great car knitting. I have lost my sock mojo completely. Although I do have some on the needles for my Lucky Dip Cal. Um, but um, that was really good to just be, you know, waiting in the car or um, whatever. Last week, it was the kids went back to school after the summer holidays last week and I thought, busiest week ever I just felt Eva's doing her GCSEs this um year and um already we've had two meetings at the school about it <laughs> so it's been up and down and last night we had to sit and um, I put a picture of us on Instagram we had to sit in the car for over two hours waiting for Samuel when you have two kids who have to be in two places at the same time <laughs> there's a lot of waiting and um poor Samuel had to go in an hour early and then we had to wait two hours for him because we live 10 miles out of town so for us to drive back and forth it's just a waste of of petrol or diesel and uh we'd only be home and have to turn around and go back again so Eva sat with a torch in the car last night doing some revision and I had my um my neck torch um and did some knitting and we watched um the Gilmore Girls. I downloaded a few, a few episodes of the Gilmore Girls on my iPad and we set it up in the car. So it was actually quite nice. But um, yes, I did knit on a on a wee sock. Um, then, but uh, yes, it, the my sock mojo always leaves me at this time of the year. I think because I've done so many up to now. But anyway, my last finished object I'm going to keep, because as always, there's a drama in my life. Um, till the next wee segment and um talk about it then 
So as I said, the only thing I've actively been working on, not I couldn't even say it actively, is I picked out my September socks from the Lucky Dip pile and they are um, this. And poor Cara, you know, I'm knitting my, these socks for Cara. She's only even getting a shorty this time. I just gave up. I think I did 25 rows on the leg. But this, these are the lovely ones this time. So I've turned for the heel and um, got down the foot a wee bit. Probably did most of that last night. Um, and the yarn is um, this and then the 50 gram sock set. And then this is the um, 20 gram that came with it. And these are from... Snuggly Stars yarn, you all know Snuggly Stars, and it is uh, Mermaid's Tail Fabulous Sock Base, <laughs> 75, 25, and 50 gram of main colour and 20 gram mini, hand dyed in England, UK. She does lovely yarn too, she's on Etsy as well, and hers is snugglystars.etsy.com. So, it was all back in, so those will be done, but... She knows, I've told her, <laughs> she might not get them this month. Um, but she's very good, she doesn't mind. Well, she's got, what's this now? She's got nine pairs so far this year. Of course, those are in my little crafty Clegg's bag that fits so well into my handbag. The light's blown out again today. So there you go. That is all really I was knitting on because if you remember in my last podcast, if you watch the screen when you're, when you're watching the podcast, um, I said, oh, that's all I knit on in my holidays. And I completely forgot that I'd almost finished another project. <laughs> and I told you what I was taking to Ireland. And I told you I was taking this project to Ireland. And I did. And I finished it. Even I finished it in the first leg of our trip before we went south. And apart from the last wee bit, oh, probably 30 rows maybe. Um, and the, the pattern designer hadn't given us yet. So that's all I had to finish on that as well. But... <laughs> Sit back, there's a story. You know, if you've watched at all, I loved past tense. I loved doing test knitting. I test knit a lot for big designers, small designers. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, I felt I was quite good at it. I could pick out mistakes. No more. <laughs> you know, I maybe bore you to death. I'm going through the menopause and it's kicked my butt is all I can say. Um, incidentally, I have started a new Instagram page in spite of menopause, in spite of the menopause. I'll put the details down below. If any of you ladies are at that stage, come over and join us. It's just, it's a private group because I've been getting very weird men wanting to join. You have no business at all doing that. So I've made it, made it private, but um, I'll happily let you follow. And it's a load of nonsense, but it's just keeping us motivated, kicking us out of this um, funk we're in but I cannot do anything about um, I've been put on new medication which I'm hoping once this heat <laughs> goes down that I will see the difference um, but my brain frog fog brain frog being brain fog is alive and well and I signed up for a test net this is no why would I use a few words when I can use many I signed up for a test net of a beautiful sweater. I'm not going to say the sweater or the designer because there's nothing wrong with either of them. It's me. Uh, I'm the problem. It's me. Um, and there's a lovely testing group and they have had no problems with it. I knit the swatch. Now it's all over colour work. I knit the swatch eight times and still didn't get it right. Thought to pot, I'm just going to start and knit the first, oh I don't know, inch, two inches at least six times and couldn't get it right. Burst into tears. I was going to sell my stash. I was never going to knit again. I was, <laughs> I, that was it. So I was clearing out my craft room. I'm never podcasting again. And then my husband reminded me that there are real problems in the world and people have real problems to deal with. And I was absolutely insane. So uh, it's amazing how something like that can knock your confidence. Honestly, it, the design is gorgeous. The designer's amazing and nobody else had any problems. So it's absolutely 100% me. Um, but it absolutely knocked my confidence. Oh, I was never knitting again. I couldn't knit. I was a, I was imposter. I was, it was ridiculous. And I was being ridiculous too. I talk about drama queen. It's ridiculous. But anyway, so, and on the back of that, 
I was merrily knitting away. You've seen it before on the Coastland Shawl for Anina of Anna Yuti Knits, who is another lovely designer. I'll put up her um, the photograph of her beautiful shawl that she finished. Um, and I love it. And it was, I was telling her how um, intuitive it is and how you can knit it. Like it was brilliant travel knitting in the car. And um, oh, I, I knit it on the plane and um, it was so easy. It's eight row repeat and I could nearly memorize it. And, uh, pride comes before a fall because she, now this is still a test knit, this isn't out yet, but go and watch her last podcast or the one before even maybe and you'll see all the details about it and um, honestly, <laughs> I think for the size that I had chosen to do, um, so this is the, this is the, the shawl, sorry it's been um, folded up obviously and this is not the colour of it, it's the lovely sea foam colour, that's not even the colour of it. I'm really sorry, I keep knitting in colours that I can't get to show up. It's probably, it's this colour actually, for some reason. <laughs> but I could definitely wear it with it lighter than this. It's sea foam colour, so put it out in your mind. It was the colour that I did my um, husband's non-jumper in, you know, the one that I ended up knitting for myself. It's that colour, but, and it's a woolly knit um, British wool. So this is the lovely, um, can you see? Yes, this is the lovely shell pattern. You can see that. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> um, and I love it. And Oh, it smells gorgeous. And it's a fairly look. It's a fairly big shawl. You can see. Sorry, Anina, it has been folded up so it doesn't show your beautiful design. Look at the detail. Lovely detail. But for my size, there should have been 55 rows of shells. <laughs> there are not 55 rows of shells and no 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 there are not love the way that goes at the end when I got to the point so probably where would it be so it was probably there so that's all I had to knit whenever she gave us the last wee bit um I had 45 yeah how look at the size of those shells how could I miss it? I mean what's that let me see um one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it should have been that much bigger. <laughs> two test nets, two test nets that I've disastrously done wrong. Uh, not disastrously, this one was absolutely fixable. I think I know where I went wrong. Um, but that doesn't help with a test knit does it she was so gracious and actually she's such a good designer that even though I went wrong the pattern was still able to do the pattern as long as you finished on a on an, the eighth row you were able just to just then go on and finish the pattern so she was so gracious and um I apologized profusely and threw all the toys out the pram and huffed and <laughs> And never doing test knits again. And remember, I did a test knit, knit for Heike of Made With Loops and I had to do it twice because I brushed over the mistakes. And, you know, so I have decided anyway, the long and short, I'm not doing any more test knits. It's not worth it for my stress. It's not worth it for my, for the people who are the designer. It's not fair. And I realized how stressful I was finding it. So there's a million other people who want to test knit. And so for the foreseeable future, you'll not see any test knits on this channel all of that was to say that but anyway this is still a massive shawl you know even though um I missed out I mean it's beautiful absolutely gorgeous so she doesn't know when she's going to publish this and she's looking for a few more testers for this um so it is absolutely gorgeous and this yarn is gorgeous too even though I'm eating it so that's the coastland shawl mark one and because it was a test knit, I felt, and because I was so annoyed with myself where I don't know where I went wrong. I do, I think I do, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm sorry our dog's barking. So in my So Yarn Delicious bag, this was in here and I took it on holidays and I just completely changed the bag with the yarn, new yarn into a bag and started again. Because I didn't think it was, it was annoying. She said, no, 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 don't worry about it. But it was annoying me so much. 
that I started again and I started the biggest one so this could be on the needles for a while and look it's just gorgeous look at this yarn even it's just beautiful this is maybe a wee bit darker in real life and then it goes out and it decreases the whole way up obviously to make the lovely um the lovely shawl sh shawl shape see the slip stitches there so I have cast on another one it'll be a long-term project um I'll show you the yarn I've used let me see and this is a lovely John Arban knit by numbers and it is 100% pure Falk Falkland merino wool and 400 meters per 100 grams and I have three of these again that's not showing up it's much darker it's a real wine color it's number one two eight but they've changed their they've changed their um bases now I think so I don't know if you'll be able to get this but if that's coming up too bright that's it there lovely wine so be perfect for the minute it's super soft but as I say I just chug along in that because when you feel like you've lost your confidence when you feel like you're no good at anything or when I feel I'm no good at anything my go-to happy place is shawls so that's why I have one two three four five six seven bags that contain shawls but I want to tell you a few other things before we look at those and it might not we might not look at them today depending because it's already 27 minutes in um but um if we don't look at them today I will record a podcast straight after this um and we'll do a whip round up so that but it will be shawl heavy so it won't be everybody's cup of tea um so that was all a mix up of everything I've been doing. Um, I didn't knit on this one, this um, coastal shawl at all last week. Um, literally the only thing I knit on was that wee snood. And um, it was just perfect because I was had was so lacking in confidence. Yet I was able to do the Ballyclare shawl because the Ballyclare shawl, the way it was set out, there was no mistakes. Um, the way it was set out. And there was no mistakes in the other test knits either. It was me. I'm the mistake. Um... But it was just set out so concisely and so like um, how it's going to be in the in the published pattern and you marked off every row that's how simplistic I needed to be at that point they marked off every row when you did it and blah blah blah, blah. so no more test knitting for me <laughs> but maybe you'll be glad about that because you'll only see patterns that are actually available to buy right now so I'll turn the page over anyway I'd said that um I had um had a wee yarny adventure and I'm sure some of you who watch me know um just make sure I've done it yes I'm sure some of you who watch me know lovely Janine from I think on Instagram she's the Faithful Sheep Diaries but she did have a podcast there's a few episodes um of the Faithful Sheep podcast um but you know life takes over she's she's looking after her wee grandchildren a lot now and life just takes over doesn't it and and you have to prioritize but we had tried to meet up last year when she came to Devon on holidays and um uh we just I was too sick I couldn't I couldn't go and visit meet her that was before the big op and um so this year I was determined when she mentioned that she was coming down in the first week of September Kids went back to school midweek and on the day they went back, got them out the door, I drove into Oakhampton and got on the train. And I have a wee bit of um, footage of that. Hottest day of the year. <laughs> we She was nearly an hour and a half late through absolutely zero fault of her own. And she was, I think she felt worse about it than I did. Um, You know what things are like when you're traveling. It's just hard. Um, and um, got to the point where I said, well, do you still want to come? And she says, oh, no, no, I still want to come. So I stood in every air-conditioned shop I could find <laughs> and wandered around. And then um, eventually she arrived and went for a lovely meal. Um, and we met, she had her little grandson Milo with her, who's only a year, a oh, brilliant wee boy, and so content. And we decided we'd tour a couple of the yarn shops in um, Exeter, which is the closest sort of, Plymouth, I'm to mean Plymouth and Exeter is where I live and um, I'd never been to them before even though I've been to Exeter a few times for some reason in my head I thought they were further out of the town because we're walking obviously and um, yes I keep going to these things I went to the John Arbor Mill on a ridiculously hot day and now we've gone to these yarn shops on a ridiculously hot day but I'm going to insert a wee bit of footage here now um, of our trip as always my disclaimer I am not a videographer it was hot did I mention it was hot 
I need to get myself um something to hold my phone, I've realised. Um it's I'm it's a bit shaky. Uh I definitely I think I held the phone the right way round this time. That was that was progress, wasn't it? <laughs> um and um you can see a wee bit of Janine and Milo and the beautiful um shops we went to. So um just hang on and um we'll put that in now. So Exeter is about 40 minutes from us and the easiest way for us to get there these days is to drive to Oakhampton and jump on the train. And it was a lovely journey apart from super hot and no AC. So you can see my yellow fan there, which I used a lot on the journey. And the first yarn shop we went to was along Avec Anna. Um, it is um, owned by Anna and she was there that day, which was a real treat. She's so lovely. And um, her shop is just tranquil, peaceful, lovely samples all her lovely own brand yarn that blue there you can see it really took my eye called royal um but we didn't buy any yarn in that sh particular shop there's janine and lovely wee milo and um some goodies were bought but not yarn so she gave us the directions down to wool on the x which was down quite a big hill um which would have been okay on a cool day but we were <laughs> Boiled by the time we walk back up it again. This is the window, and they sell everything. Uh, if it's not there, you probably don't need it. <laughs> From commercial yarn to hand dyed yarn, uh, toft goodies, pom poms, as you can see, books, um, craft, and actually only watching the video back, I actually saw things on the video that I didn't even see when I was physically there. Um, it is a very small shop, but oh my goodness, she's used every nook and cranny. There's Malabrigo. Sorry about the dodgy filming, as usual. Um, there's project bags there and behind, crochet hooks, and this wall of shawls, as you can imagine, took my heart. Um, Debbie, the owner, would happen to be there too, and she loves shawls as well. And um, more lovely yarn. We have Milo playing there. There's their needles. That's how they store them. Um, and again, lots of, there's some commercial yarn. I think that's Sirdar. Um, so everybody's needs were be met in Wool on the X. You can see how bright sunshine it was outside. There's some sock yarn, needles, straight needles, wooden straight needles. There's fluff for spinning. Um, there's some of their own hand dyed yarn. Um, just lovely, really well set out for such a small shop. Um, but yes, everybody's needs would be met there, definitely. Those bargain buckets, I may have got a few things out of those, but mm, saying nothing. <laughs> There's even cross-stitch um, stuff, belt, you name it, it was in that wee shop. Sorry again for the dodgy um, filming. There's some lovely handmade project bags, needle bags, um, some Emma Ball stuff. Um, some more of theirs and camel yarn as well um, there. Um, sock blockers, mitten blockers. There's a lovely wee Milo per wee thing was roasted. Not a peep out of him all day. He was just a wee doat. And um, it was just lovely to spend time with Janine going to a couple of yarn shops. And you can see there more lovely yarn. And this just says taught 150 people to knit, founded 26 knitting groups, taught knitting in four schools, sent 29, no, 290 items to knit for peace, knit 36 pairs of socks for homeless and hosted 1800 people at our twice weekly drop in groups. And that just proves how warm it was. 31 degrees and my horrible sweaty face. We didn't take any other pictures together because we were too sweaty and hot. Um, and um. Thanks for coming with us. Great to go to Yarn Shop with lovely Janine and to finally meet up with her after all this time. And yeah, we'll talk soon. Bye. So I'm back. <laughs> Hope you enjoy that wee ramble um, of my talking over everything. Um, yes, you saw it was a very hot day, but what a fantastic time we had. Um, the the um, a long avic and a shop. I definitely want to go back on a day whenever it's, I just couldn't even think straight. Um, she was so welcoming and so nice and um, I did get, uh, where did I put it? Oh here, I did get, you saw on the thing, um, some goodies from her. Now as I said there was yarn there in the colour royal, no it's not royal blue but it's a lovely petroly blue. Oh, she does um, her own, all her own yarn um, and uh, in 50 gram balls so I couldn't compute how many I needed and she does um, mohair, 
or floof I should say, I don't know what the consistency of the base is. And she does DK and she does fingering and oh gorgeous. And all of her samples, she has quite a lot of um, her own patterns. So check out along Avec Anna. And again, she was there, which was lovely. And she was so gracious because we were sweaty models of puddles of, you know, we must have looked <laughs> right sight and she was so gracious. And imagine it'd be a lovely place to just go and knit. There was a lovely sofa. And then at the back of the shop, there was um, a table, I thought, which you could do, you know, knit nights and stuff. And yes, I definitely want to go back now. I know where it is um, in Exeter. And then Wool on the X, um, there, um, oh, it was just a treasure trove. But again, my brain, I couldn't compute. I don't need any yarn whatsoever, let's face it. But um, yeah, if definitely go back. And actually there was a wee Christian bookshop beside it, which we'd intended to go into, but by that stage we'd had enough. And uh, we just um, trundled back up the quite steep hill. Be fine in cooler weather, but when you're pushing a pram um, and um, feeling very sweaty, I was saying, you know, normally when the sun comes out here, everybody's in a good mood. But that day, everybody, even shopkeepers, seemed to be a bit grumpy and, you know, it was just too much. So um, yeah, so um, definitely, a, I'll take another trip. Um, I know in, I think it's September, later this month or maybe next month, um, Bird Street Yarn are doing a um, trunk show in um, in that shop in Wool on the X. So um, that might be interesting to go to. And the other thing she had was this massive screen and you could look, she could look up um, Ravelry um, patterns for you and she put me on to a beautiful pattern that um, she's going to use some hand spun for her. So if you're in the Exeter area, if you're down on holidays, um, or it's a bit late now, maybe most people have gone, but um, do definitely check out Along Avagana Anna and um, All in the Eggs, and they're both online as well. So um, yes, so um, I'm not going to show you what's in these because they're for prizes, um, but, oh, it's just so sophisticated in that shop, it's so lovely. <laughs> and there's us sweating all over place and then um i'll just show you some of the things that that did that i have got this month so of course i met lovely janine and she brought some gifts i had brought her some gifts and she brought me some gifts please if i meet up with you you do not have to bring gifts the lovely uh, girls dally and sam from woolly adventure to i met in northern ireland give me gifts and now that janine's give me gifts and oh beautiful where do you see these two stunners look at this <gasps> Oh, I see another Ballyclare shawl. <laughs> Bird Street yarn. This one is um peacock suit, um merino and island four ply, and this one is stop the pigeon merino and island four ply. They're so soft from Bird Street yarns, which I've just mentioned. And then she gave me a gorgeous wee book, Days of Grace, an illustrated prayer journal. So I'm going to keep that um, and start it in the new year, I think. So thank you so much, Janine. We Milo was a treat. Um, absolutely don't. And it was just great to see them. And can we meet up when it's a bit cooler next time? That'd be great. OK. <laughs> and then um, when I went to Wool on the X, which is this one. Now, this isn't all full of stuff I got from there. Wool on the X. I, of course, had to get a few things. I just need to lift these out first because they're not from Wool on the X. Let me see. I have, I have gone back to using some straight needles. And um, I, bit my the big shawls I knit, I'm fine. My cables are just annoying. So I'm starting it off in straight needles and then going on to the cables. And they're everywhere. I have them in a plastic bag and they're poking out of it. So I saw these. You've seen, you'll have seen them in the video. These cool, isn't that gorgeous? So I've got a new needle bag. Um, Shirley's Crafts knitting needle bag. Hand sewn, 100% cotton hand wash. Not even coming up as bright as it is so i'll be getting all of my my needles into that to keep them safe and stop them from being broken because they're mostly wooden and um it's such lovely quality and she had um uh, normal project bags in there too i mean look it's fully lined lovely and then i had seen these i'd looked online before i went <laughs> and i had seen these um the one i wanted i have bought some of this um kinross four ply 
Now, if you watch the Crea Bea podcast, she raves about this, that when you've knitted up and blocked it, it feels like cashmere. And I managed to get um some of the yellow, which is gorse, I think, in a sale. And I just always wish I'd got one more, but one more skein. <laughs> and um, I saw it online, but it was too, I should have saved it and I should have picked it up because you can do curbside, but I, I didn't get in. So anyway, so these were in the... um what to call it the bargain clearance and this one is fairy pool it's four ply it's 50 grams <clears throat> and these two are the same and they are granite i actually thought those would go really well together so i thought i had to pick something up so i got those and they were well we're just down i think they're only four four pounds something so that was my um purchases and then they always pop this in i love that <laughs> a very happy wee lamb <laughs> So that was just a lovely experience going into those two shops and um, yeah, and eating waffles and pancakes and everything. It was lovely. <laughs> and then um, I have a lovely viewer called Jane um, and she, I have been raving about this shush yarn from um, James C. Brett. I've knit several things. I've got several whips in it and she bought it on my recommendation but didn't get on with it i am sorry it is a funny thing it's a dk but it feels like a fingering but it knits up like a dk and it's got fluff you can see the the halo which i don't generally like but i have absolutely fallen in love with this and it's got a massive um because it's so light it's got a massive um yardage i think it's 580 meters I, but she sent me it she asked me if she could send me it so this is the one this is the on the yarn that she'd bought it's not even coming up it's teal it's all all this year's um colors really it's teals and orange and burnt orange and everything it's it's um number oh two and then this is the one she started and didn't didn't get on with <laughs> bright 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 and i've actually got a project started in in this already so thank you very much jane and this lovely wee card isn't that gorgeous? She made it herself, handmade with love, it says on the back. And that was just a wee treat when that came too. And I really appreciate it and I do love it, so I'll, I'll be knitting with it. And then, in the post came, oh, it's a bit missing, I'm not sure where it's going anyway. I won <laughs> the wee mini skein, the Woolly Adventures, as if they hadn't given me enough. And I actually messaged him and said, look, do you want to redraw it? Because I have got a lot of your yarn. Um, Woolly Adventures do a monthly or weekly, weekly, um, mental health skein, so to speak. And um, there's it there again. See it? And I won it. And I won this beautiful mini skein. I think this might be their home colorway um you see it less than they sent me and they sent me um some little stitch markers and they sent me um two wee melts like candle melts but it was so hot that they were melted so i have put them over to um use later on and um yeah there, there was two of them but there's only one now because they melted into each other so that was the wee the wee i won the wee giveaway i oh, it's lovely really lovely Beautiful, so, so spoiled. And then the last thing, this I don't think, I don't think, I think maybe I'll do the whips later because I still want to share a wee bit. Um, so the last thing is my daughter um, wants a new cardigan and she said, Mama, you can do it, do it for me for Christmas. And she chose one because it's called the Eva cardigan <laughs> by Petite Knit. Now I always stayed away from Petite Knit patterns because I felt they weren't size inclusive. Um, but she's only a, about a size medium. And um, um, actually this goes up, the only thing, this goes up to 5XL, which is a 61 inch. But um, I wish they would just do numbers. <laughs> so I don't want to think, I'm not a 61 inch, but I don't want to be a 3X, please. I would like to be a number, but anyway. So this is this is um, the petite knit, and you can see it's called the Eva cardigan. She's called Eva. And that's what she wants. And she picked out the yarn. She said, Mum, don't do not do expensive yarn because I don't want to have to worry about it. So the yarn I bought her came to £8. She chose it. And it's this colour. Oh, that's coming up really well. And it's from New Fashion Double Knitting by Woolcraft. And it's 100% acrylic. It's shade 39. I just got this in the Woolly Beater in town. 
um, and she absolutely loves it. And I've knit with it before, it's all right, it's not squeaky. Um, and that's what she chose. So that's going on the needles at some point, but and it's DK, so it should knit up quite quick, and she's only a medium, as I say. So that was from the Woolly Beater. So lots of things have come in, lots of gifts, a few, not too many purchases. You can't go wrong with eight pounds worth of wood, can you? Um, and um, yeah, so I'm hoping this week that I'll get back into the stride, that I'll get back into the the uh, <laughs> the whips and um, get them done. But there, none of them are going to be particularly quick um, whips, and um, which is a bit worrying. I have no idea how many minutes this is because I've stopped and started a few times. Um, but you know what? I think I'm just going to go ahead with the whips and um, share them. You don't have to watch if it's not your thing. I speed through them, and um, but I need to rearrange the room a wee bit. So I'll be with you in a wee minute. Back again. <laughs> so there's no order to these whips. As I said to you, um, I have cast on lots of things because... Um, I lost my confidence and my happy place is shawls. What can I say? If you're not a shawl knitter, I apologise. Um, but that's where we are. We do I do have one bag with a um garment in it, but it's not I was just thinking it's not really a whip because it's not started, it's only been swatched, and it's part of my dust them off mal um entrance, although I can't do anything. Um I think it's so we'll just start and um go through them. Some of them are on the floor. But obviously you've seen that one, so that's the coastland. So that's number one. We'll not look at that one again. <laughs> and then we've got um the my first entry for the Dust em Off Mal. I'll put it a picture here. This might take a while to download with all these videos and pictures. And it's the Hirith shawl um from the 52 weeks of sh of socks books by Claire Walls. And if you remember, I was using Witchcrafty Lady, it's in my beautiful soft accents bag. Um, and it's in this gorgeous um, colour from Witchcrafty Lady and I've done quite a bit I reckon I could get this finished if it's stuck because it's it's worsted oh it's coming up much brighter than it actually is my whole, the whole place is that's it probably you can see it's really lovely oh that's the design and then this side is going down into the, um, to make the shawl. It's really blowing out the camera. It's much more briny rust. It's not orange. <laughs> I'll show you it on a skein. This is going to be massive, but I love a big shawl. So this is the, this is my last skein of the one, of the one skeined up. And then this is my last one. So, and this is from Witchcrafty Lady. And this is Paul Dale DK, um, 245 meters, and it's called Chestnut. So it's not that, that's not right. It's not, that's it there. It's stunning. It's absolutely beautiful. And if you go to Witchcrafty Lady's Instagram, she did have a sale on, an Instagram sale on some of her yarn. So there might be still some, but I just love it. I think she's doing a bit of a clear out, you know, before she gets her new stock. And it's so bouncy. This was, half of this was given to me as a gift. And, well, three skeins were given to me as a gift. And I already had two um, for Christmas year before last from my lovely friend Nikki. So it's great to be able to knit that up. And it's going to be so squishy and gorgeous. I wish I could just get the right colour. But anyway, so that's one. And that will be an act, that's an active whip, which I'm going to get finished because um, that's part of the mall. Get everything back in there. So that's number two. Then number three is in my lovely um, Birdie and Poppet bag. This was done for um, the Flower Power Fund, which is linked to um, where I do the socks for. They raise money any way they can. I thought that was brilliant. And you can see the wee Birdie and Poppet. Um, so this so money from this bag went to charity. Um, now this is, um, I'll put the picture here. This is a pattern from my lovely friend Laura, who owns the Woolly Beater in Oakhampton, my local yarn shop. And um, she has, she designed this and she's got a, if you're ever in the Woolly Beater, she's got a, um, it on display. It's called the Hexagon Shawl. And I started it in, now this won't be everybody's cup of tea. The, the shawl will, but the colour I chose won't be. 
and this is what I've done so far. Get it around the right way. Not much to look at. You see, I did. I just cast on wild abandon, and this is what I've done so far. Look at this. <laughs> oh, it's gonna fall on the floor. Look at those colours. It's half a year turning off, aren't you? <laughs> like, no, Ruth, you've gone too far this time. And this is with the shoosh yarn that I showed before. Look at those colours. <gasps> And everything's fallen off my knee. Sun, I need my table back. Let's see which is the right side. I put a thing on, have I? No, I haven't. It's the right side there, isn't it? So dopey. Yes, that's the right side. So these will block out into lovely wee um, things like that. I love it and I love this yarn it's as light as a feather and um it's gonna you can see me coming <laughs> so that's more of that shush yarn in that um there's the label John C Brett um it's 80 percent acrylic 20 percent wool and it's 550 meters um 601 yards per 100 grams and that's colorway sh01 nope so that's another one so that's three. Now, the only person who probably judge me is my dad. And you're not allowed to judge me, dad. He always asks, what do you do with all those shawls? What do you... Mind your business. Anyway, give me a clip around the ear for saying that. <laughs> the next one is in my lovely corduroy bag by So Yarn Alicious. I've had this a wee while. Um, and this is... Um, oh, I remember the name of it. It is the Golden Hall Shawl. It's hard to me, for me to say in my accent. The Golden Hall Shawl by uh, Nicola Larkin York. Um, she's on Ravelry. And um, I think she goes by the Nerdy Knitter. Knitter. She's got, um, I think this is some reference to Lord of the Rings. I've never watched it, do apologise. Um, and she's got another shawl coming out in on Friday. Um, I have to buy it. I have to buy it cables she loves cables i love cables and um yes it's gonna be it's gonna be bought when it's gonna be cast on i don't know i've only done a wee bit on it again i cast on everything because i needed this is my this is my therapy after i decided i couldn't knit anymore and um this is um it actually looks this to me the same front and back so it's funny um yeah, it looks now this maybe won't be this is all I've done, but you can see the cables already forming. I'll put a picture of hers up here. So it's gonna be a big over the shoulder around. It's it's just gorgeous. Moss stitch, I'm maybe I'm mad in the head, Irish moss stitch, but um you can see the cables already forming on it, can't you? So it's gonna be amazing. Um and the yarn I've chosen for it to worsted weight is this um lovely yarn I had in stash which is Cascade 220 Superwash and Wave it says and the colourway is maybe it is maybe Wave is the colourway it's 106 whatever that is so it's sort of variegated but I think it'll be fine once we get up the pattern a wee bit when there's more cable and you'll be able to see it's a, a denim blue not really showing the colours well today at all and I'm using these lovely wee stoppers that were gifted to me by um Shannon of Blue Fern Yarns. Thank you so much. So that's another one. So that's what four now. Don't judge. And then um another so yarn delicious bag. Even if you don't like shawls, um look at my beautiful <laughs> project bags. And yes, I need them all. And yes, they are essential. And um yes. <laughs> so this is a wee one. And um this is another um more i've got it on the um yarn butler <laughs> i'll just put the whole lot in the in the project bag <laughs> this is another one of those um i'm addicted to it it's so cheap it's like 349 for a 100 gram ball and this is another shush um double knit and this colorway is um sh12 so I've, I've still if that's if it goes by the number still a lot of colors to get it's on the yarn butler <laughs> <laughs> just put the whole thing in the bag oh I've left out that needs to go with that and then um 
this is just um, a wee um, age of brass and steel. I'll put a picture of what I've knit this a few times before and it is a brilliant one again when you just need mindless knitting. Now it's for double knit and um, um, I should have already finished the pattern but I'm just going to keep going until I've used up all the wool. And I think this is, these aren't necessarily my colours um, but I know someone will enjoy it or I might just decide these are my colours. Probably be a fantastic wee shawl for um going from uh, winter into spring. But it just layers up so beautifully then the eyelets and I so I should have probably finished about there or there, but I'm just gonna keep going till um I've used up. And I the only did thing I the only thing I did different on the pattern is I did a slip stitch in the middle, but it was more kind of thought it looked nice. That was the only thing I changed about the pattern. And that's the state, the age of brass and steel by it's actually a kerchief by Orange Flower Yarns. And there and it's on Etsy. It's a free pattern, I think. Um I say that all the time and then people message me, it's not a free pattern. Um I really want to say it is. Anyway, so that's my fifth. <laughs> then um another gorgeous bag this is a very early purchase from so yarn delicious um she's changed she's changed her logo and everything so this is a very early i think i got this in the sale because she was now you've seen this before but i've been very bad at knitting it do you remember i knit this i started knitting it and i was using the wrong yarn um just didn't like the yarn for it and so i went back and ripped it out and started in something else and you'll have seen this yarn before because i knit a top um a sweater in it it is woolly knit, it's from a cone, it's merino, no it's not, it's 100% British wool and it's this Smilga, put what it's supposed to look like up there, it's a Smilga, the Smilga shawl by um, Anise Sang and this is what I've done so far. Again it's coming up, it's more, um, it's called Lupin, the colourway Lupin, you can imagine what Lupins are like. Um, Uh, but I haven't touched it in a wee while because lack of confidence, etc, etc. I um, Because you have to follow the pattern for it. But it's going to be gorgeous. And then I think I'm going to put, um, I think the picture I put up has two colours bobbles. I think I'm only going to do one colour. Or might not do any bobbles at all. They might just be lovely. Nice wee rainbow stitch marker. It's gorgeous. Um, so that's a Smilga by um, Anise Sang. As I say, I'm using the end of a cone that I got from Woolly Knit. That is actually the colour. And uh, yes, it's definitely, yeah, 100% British, British wool and colourway lupin. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm, I'm whizzing through them. They'll be fine. You'll be fine. Go and pause it and get another um, cup of tea or coffee or something. Then I'll oh, lift this up onto the chair before it falls down. Lift this one up onto the chair. Who'd have kids, eh? They steal everything from you. <laughs> Want my table back? Anyway, this is in the wee project bag I showed you last week. I've decided to keep the one I actually bought um, of my little, this is my future. <laughs> I'm proud, proud of it. Um, this wee project bag, if you remember right, is from Knitter Bag, lovely maker from Lithuania. And um, this was gifted to me, this pattern, just last week, week before. Cast on straight away. And then the heat came. <laughs> so, um, and it's a lovely viewer um, gifted me this uh, pattern. I put a picture up here. If I get the name of it. It is the Riptide 135. There's actually, I think that's the same picture I put up, isn't it? So there's three versions. There's a small, medium and large. I'm doing the medium. Um, it's actually 135 because it's one skein, three skeins or five skeins. And it's by JST Knitwear. I put all the details down below. It's going to be a lot of show notes this week. JST Knitwear Designs, uh, Jennifer Shields Toland, that is. And it's brand new. It's only out this year. Um, Erica, um, the person who... I'm saying Erica. The person who gave it to me um, actually tested it and thought I would like it. And I definitely do. So what have I cast on with it. I'm going to put these back in or I'll find all these patterns later that aren't in projects. So I had this in stash. I got this in a bargain 
bin. Where did I get this? I think this was two pounds a ball. And a closing down sale somewhere. It's Rowan Baby Merino Silk DK, 50 grams in the colorway. 00684. Favourite colourway. 66% wool, 34% silk. Perfect for shawls. That's perfect. That is actually the colour. And I had about five balls of this. Um, so I'm no six, one, two, three, four, five. Five, but whatever way it worked out, I can do the middle, the middle um one. And I cast it, as I say, I cast it on immediately. And then the heat came, but look, it's not quite. My stomach's rumbling, do you apologise? <gasps> Love it. So thank you very much for the pattern. Um, we've got birthday cake or cupcake stoppers. Yes, I've jumped on that bandwagon. Um, and I'm just going to chug away at all of these. <laughs> I've decided that the knitting police are no longer watching me. Um, and that's just the way it is and once I get my my knitting mo I was saying I've just I've got I was talking to some of my friends online and saying what do you call it when you've lost your mojo for everything else but all you want to knit is shawls and they said I've got my shoujo so that's <laughs> that's my shoujo is is alive and well and um sorry if that's not your thing but again look at beautiful but so we're nearly finished we're nearly finished so this one is on hold till the new year it is the Cecil shawl. Do you remember I started it? I do not like knitting with mohair, but I loved the shawl. So I purchased three small balls of mohair. Um, but it was in June when we had the other bit of heat and I had the fan on and it was all disaster. And also, um, it's from Twin Set and Pearl. Did I say all the details about that? Yes, I did. So Twin Set and Pearl, lovely Joe. And um, it's a gorgeous shawl and it will be knit, but... Stay tuned to why I'm not knitting it now and it's going to wait to 2024. That's all I'm saying. I'll show you the colours I'm using and then we'll move on. These are my three colours of mohair. Beautiful. That'd be a, that'd be a good um, thumbnail. <laughs> and then I'm using this cone of grey from Woolly Knit. Um, merino wool cone. This was gifted to me and it's Cal... Kalina grey so it's like um almost a whitish grey and I say this was gifted to me and um I have done the tiniest of bits I mean it's not worth talking about is it <laughs> so it will all be revealed why this is not getting finished this year um but in 2024 so please keep watching that's the hope that I'm still going to be doing it in 2024. <laughs> still podcasting in 2024. And that's in another soft accents bag. Yes, I'm addicted. To the, I'm not doing anybody any harm. Um, and they're absolutely gorgeous. My last soft accents bag, you'll be glad to hear, is not a shawl. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shawls. Some of them will be gifted. I'm not justifying myself. I love them. It's my favourite thing. That's it. If you remember, I picked out two things for my dust them off mal. Um, I need to photocopy this because this book's getting wrecked. Um, and um, I did a swatch, do you remember? That's not shown either. It's much more petrolly. That's it there. And I'm doing the grassland top by Susan Shadler um, from the Making Stories Fall 2021. And this was, I said this book, I could knit everything in this book. It's amazing. Um, but I haven't cast it on yet. So that's not really, that's not really a, um, a whip, is it? No, it's not really a whip. <laughs> but it needs to get cast on because it needs to be done before the end of the year. So if you remember, I am using um, the right one. I am using, again, Woolly Knit. <laughs> I had um, two, you know, they do the, the 200 gram, um, skeins oh my stomach it's lovely lovely petrol green who thought would be it seem to be going through a green phase don't know and then i had this yarn um which i bought in when we went to northern ireland in the wee shop in port stewart and it's like um it's lace but like 
slightly mohairish. It's not. It's I can knit with it and wear it, put it that way. Um, and look, there was a big debate on the Young Folk Knits audio podcast about centripals. I always centripal. I've never had a problem, so I don't know. And that's Charm from um, Lace Sweat from Stylecraft. And I was a bit worried because it could come out as stripy, but it's not. It's come out just as a lovely thing. And it's 85 premium acrylic, 10% wool and 5% mohair. So trying to use more kind of budget friendly yarns. And this is, and it's got a massive, this has got a massive, it's called Deep Water. And this has got a massive, um, yeah, yardage too. It's 184 meters and 180 or 185 yards for 200 grams. So it really goes a long way. Not sure if I'll do it, you know, on the top and um bottom, but we'll see. So when you put these two together, where did I put it? You get this. And I got gauge and everything. So you see it just it's just peppered through. So that needs to go on. That's it's not a priority, but you know <laughs> it needs to go on. And I need to photocopy this because this book is getting ruined. Um, so that's all my whips. That doesn't seem so bad. That's not so bad. I know people who've got 25 whips. Like I know. Look, that's not, and I knit those all. I want to knit on them all. It's not like they're sitting there and um, I don't want to knit on them. I want to absolutely. It's another soft accent bag. If you haven't seen Jackie's bags, and I don't think she's got anything in her Etsy shop at the minute because she's been doing a lot of shows. So jealous that you've, some people have met her um, at the shows. But oh, I just love it. These Farai bags from Soft Accents. So, my so so yarnalicious and soft action accents bags are definitely my favourites. Um, and I just they make me happy. <laughs> so that's my whips. I did the I did it. This podcast is going to be probably a thousand my a thousand hours long, but it's done. Let me know what you think. Um, you know I will knit other things. I promise. Um, trying to work out what the next I have lots not lots low well quite a bit of worsted iron weight um so i think definitely i want to do like another couple of jumpers and, and that um i need to um think about um christmas i'm not a big christmas knitter i tend to give people things for their birthdays instead um i need to do eva's cardigan so there's a lot in the pipeline so plenty to say it won't all be shawls i promise um but if you've stuck with me this long i really really appreciate it Sorry, just get my notes again. Um, and um, yeah, you're you're just fantastic. I don't take it for granted that you watch this nonsense. <laughs> I know there's super professional podcasts out there with super professional videographer, and I can never say that word, obviously. And I really, really appreciate you spending time with me and the community that we've built here and the friendships and the just. Oh, it's just been lovely um just watching this old gray-haired woman <laughs> when there's lots of young young fine things doing these podcasts but i really really appreciate it and next time i've been watching a couple of few new podcasts new to me podcasts you've maybe all heard of them and i'll definitely mention those the next time too I need to write all these things down that i'm going to mention next time but if you've watched me before you know i'm a christian and i love to share a wee bit at the end of my podcast of what the lord's put in my heart if this isn't something you want to listen to, I understand and I will bid you goodbye now. But, you know, it's only five minutes and you never know. You might just get a wee nugget that'll, that'll just encourage you today. But as I say, if it's not your thing, no hard feelings and we'll see you next time. All right. God bless. Bye. If you're staying with me, I just want to, to do just share what's been on my mind for maybe a few weeks now. Um, If you've watched, oh, I don't know what number it was. I asked... um. What three words would you use to describe yourself? Do you remember that? A few podcasts ago, maybe four podcasts ago, I don't know. And I got such fun answers. I thoroughly enjoyed reading through them. Um, and so many folk answered with different different answers. Some were fun, some were a bit um hard on yourselves, but it was I really enjoyed reading them. And I was thinking about what three words would I would I describe myself and now, maybe the three words I would use for myself are, are different from the ones my kids would use or my husband or my my wider family and friends might use. But, and they might change day to day. And for me, they probably changed RTR in my case anyway. Um, and sometimes my three words might be something like fun, friendly, generous. Or other times they might be grumpy, irritable and hot mess. <laughs> A hot mess. 
<laughs> that's two words fair enough um then I thought about three words that apply to me no matter how I'm feeling what life's thrown at me or what I look like in the mirror and the first word I thought of was saved and I, even just saying that word just lifts my spirits just makes me so happy that I am saved I'm going to quote a lot of scripture today because I never want to, anybody to think these are my own words. I want to back everything up by scripture and the translation I'm using is the New Living Translation. The first thing is I want is Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. And it says, God saved you by his grace when you believed and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done so none of us can boast about it. Now I've quoted that scripture before but it's very very well to use it again. That undeserved gift we have been given is amazing. Jesus suffered in our place. Just take a minute. Jesus suffered in our place. 2 Corinthians um, chapter 5 verse 21 says, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Doing good things, of course, is always a good idea. It's always a good thing to do. But you know, no matter how hard we try, we could never do enough good things to get us to heaven or to make us saved. We need to come humbly before the Lord, accept that we're sinners Ask him for forgiveness and let him truly be the centre of our lives, the boss of our lives. That is what we call having a personal, personal relationship with God. Romans 10 verse 9 to 10 says, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God and it is openly declaring your faith that you are saved. That last bit's important too. We can't keep this good news to ourselves. We have to tell others. You know, I was thinking, you know, do your neighbours, do my neighbours know that I'm a Christian? Do they know that I'm different? Do they see that I'm different? That's a challenge for all of us today, isn't it? Well, my second word I struggled with because I want to use two words. I want to use new creation, but I'm going to just say new or changed. Either of those is good. I As you can see, I struggle to keep it short. You know, in 2 Corinthians 5, 16 to 17, it says, At one time we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. This new life, new attitude, change of heart and with the Lord's help enables us to fulfill the most important commandment. In Matthew 22, verse 37 to 40, it says, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbour as yourself. But oh boy, without the Lord's help, that is a struggle sometimes, isn't it? We all know people that we struggle and if we weren't, didn't have the Lord helping us that we would really find difficult. So it's um, saved. I'm going to say changed. I'm going to say changed. Um, and then my last one is air. H-E-I-R. Um, I want to say assured of heaven, but that's too many words. And again, I've quoted this, you know it, even if you've never stepped inside a church, you probably know this scripture and it's John 3, 16. Of course it is. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that everyone that who believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The old King James version was going around in my head there. Um, only It's only one way you can get to heaven. John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You can't make it happen. You can't wish it to happen. You can't work for it to happen. You have to ask, come humbly before him and ask him to save you. Romans 8, 17 8 to 18 says, And since we are his children, we are his heirs. We are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs to God's glory. That blows my mind. <laughs> but if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. Yet we, what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. You know, in some countries, Christians are truly suffering. They can't even mention the Lord's name without the risk of 
life and limb or dam or hurt to their family or real persecution where being a Christian just isn't allowed. So compared to them, our lives are pretty easy. But there's other suffering just living day by day in this world. I get emails all the time telling me about people who are suffering so much with their health, their mental health, their family situation. But you know, if we remember that we can be heirs of Christ and that one day it will be worth it all just to see Jesus. I hope you can use these three words and maybe you have far better words <laughs> to describe yourself too. It doesn't mean I'm perfect or better than anyone else. Absolutely not. Some days are definitely harder than others. Sadly, we still live in this fallen world, even though we have um, Jesus living in our hearts. But no matter how I personally feel each day when I look in the mirror, watch the news, oh, the things that are going on at the minute with the flooding and wars and Oh, or just interact with the world. I know without a shadow of a doubt that I've been saved by grace. I'm a new creation in Christ and someday when this old life is over, I will be with him in heaven. When I remind myself of these things, then I can face whatever today or tomorrow brings. Whatever comes my way, I'm not alone. I am right in the centre of, of um, God's hands. I'm right in the palm of his hand. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. My hope and prayer today is that you don't have this hope, that you wouldn't, <laughs> mess that up, didn't I? My hope and prayer today is that if you don't have this hope, <laughs> that you would leave it. You wouldn't leave it another day, but come to the Lord today. I'm sorry, that was messed up. Don't leave it another day. Don't leave it till tomorrow. Don't say, oh, I'll do that when I'm not busy. Oh, I'll do that when the, the kids are older. I'll do that when whatever. Don't leave it another day. It doesn't take much time to just get down on your knees and just ask for forgiveness and ask the Lord to be the boss of your life. What a change that could make in your life. What a change that could make in your family's life. The ripple effects of that in your community could be massive. And I hope that you can think of those three words that, that describe you as well. Saved, changed or new, and an heir to the kingdom. Uh, I really, um, I'm so thrilled that I can say that about myself, that I heard the gospel, that I was able to take it in and digest it and realise that God loves me so much and he gave his only son to die on the cross for me, for me. And that it is so worthwhile following him. And I have never regretted that decision. Now, after that <laughs> mess up at the end, I hope you'll forgive me. Uh, it's been a long one. My tongue is starting to stick to the roof of my mouth. I hope it hasn't been too long. But um, hopefully next time it'll be a bit more under control. There'll be a bit more knitting to show. And until then, I hope you keep on knitting. And um, yes, God bless. Bye for now. Bye.